So, uh, the male Apollo is in here, hiding in the cereal box there. Okay, there he is. He bred Boreas, the snow female. This is their third time uh, being coupled together. And she is definitely gravid. You guys all saw the video. And right now she's pregnant. And I got her nest box here. But we don't want to disturb her too much. You can see she's a lot thicker in the back half there. Also, she just did her timely shed, which uh, usually happens about 10 days before they're going to lay their eggs. So she did her shed three days ago now, so I'm expecting eggs from her within the next seven days. You gave her a bit of a nest box in there, you just want to have some kind of a moist environment for her. Uh, you can use moss, you can use moist paper towelettes, anything, but you want her to have a medium temperature or a medium humidity place to do it otherwise they'll lay them where somewhere where it's too dry or somewhere where it's too wet which would both be really bad. This is what I use the vermiculite. You just want to make sure there's nothing added to it. It's just basically a good uh, medium for holding water. See it in there. Has this one for a couple of years. And you want to go for your nest box, you want to just give her a moist place to lay her eggs. Now, I'm going to sh also show you how to make a homemade incubator. I do have this big, huge snake room, which I could probably just put it by the rack there, by the heat tape, and let the let the eggs take a little longer, but they would still incubate. But uh, I've had a few requests, people wondering how to do it, so I'm going to show you guys. Uh, how I make mine. Okay, so I told everyone I would post a video today on the homemade incubator. Uh, you want a big container that you can hold some water in, whether it's Tupperware or a small tank. I'm using a little bit bigger of a tank, that's because I plan on having a couple batches of eggs this year, so I want to be able to incubate them all. Uh, you want your Tupperware container filled with uh, vermiculite a tight fitting lid um, I got a little hole in there as you can see that's just to put my thermometer probe through just to make sure all my temperatures are correct um, you're also gonna want one of these things which is a under tank heater and you can just set the temperature on there to what you want and it's gonna keep the water that temperature so I have two of those just because I'm using a bigger tank and I want things to be accurate in case one fails. Uh, I also have a little pump here that's going to help circulate the water. So you're going to want that in there just so you don't have a stagnant pool of water and it'll circulate the heat a little better. Um, anyway, so with your container of vermiculite, you want to be very careful not to over moisten it. You want to have enough water in there to where it's moist, but not overly wet to where you can squeeze water out of it. So I just pour a bit in there, mix it around. You want it to feel kind of moist, but not overly soaked. Um, it's best to set your nest box up a little bit early, figure all your temperatures and humidity is right. Uh, usually you can start doing that after she does her shed which is usually 10 to 14 days prior to the egg length. A uh, good way to gauge the humidity obviously you can use a gauge but also some people like to put a white piece of paper over it all once your eggs are in there and if the paper is dry then obviously you have to mist it add some more water to bring the humidity up and you usually want to use the same temperature of water so I would just scoop some out of the tank and if the paper's too slimy, then that obviously means it's way too moist and you should add some vermiculite or something to help soak up uh, some of the excess moisture, whether it's leaving the lid off or adding vermiculite. So you do that, you get your eggs in there, 
and what I'm going to do is put that in here in the tank and it's just going to float on top then I'm going to hook these under tank heaters up I'm going to put them on the glass there get those both hooked up uh, you want to wait, you want to submerge those in your water and then wait a half hour so they adjust to the temperature of the water so I'm not going to hook those up yet but you get the idea I'm going to put two of those up, they got a line that tells you where they should be where the water should go up to so I'm going to put those on there and then I'm going to have my container floating in there I'm going to put a lid on there just so it's not all shaking and moving and then you're going to want some weight or something to keep on there and I'm going to have the pump going circulating some water it's going to all be at a constant temperature and I'm going to be going at a temperature of 85 degrees I'm not going to tell anyone what to do people do it all differently uh, I've just gone 85 degrees the last couple years with this method and I've gotten eggs within 60 days so I'll keep you guys posted I'll uh, let you know how it all turns out once she hatches her or lays her eggs. Thanks, bye. Alright, so I pretty much got it all hooked up. I got my little pump in there. It's pushing up a bit, giving it a bit of a current. I got my two heaters here. I'm going to put one on each side of the tank just to help even the heat out. Put them on the lines. Uh, I also wanted to add you should have a high, a high drop a hydro hydrometer <laughs> I don't even know how to say it, hygrometer anyway it measures the humidity you're going to want one of those in there plus I got my digital thermometer you're going to want to put that probe in through the little hole that I was talking about there and you're going to want to set this up about a week in advance monitor your temperatures, get it all figured out correctly so that when the eggs come, uh, you're all set and ready.